What was that? Like, what? what? Mm. Okay, okay. That? Hmm. Gotta roll up my sleeves to this one. I already know it's gonna get heated. So, alright. The only way that I can do this is chronologically, so let's see if I go any on any tangents. They obviously put Sunny Pa in the same, like, preliminary area as Leela, but they gave us nothing. Absolutely nothing. Where are they? Where are they, Sunrise? I, mm, mm, I need those goods. I need those goods. I went as far as to talk about A-Rise in my last video, and yet you still deny me that sweet rival content. Have we ever gone an entire season without getting, like, at least most of an insert song from the rivals? I honestly don't remember, um... Wait, no, I do remember what happened with Saint Snow. We got their first performance and it slapped. It set the bar for the kind of performances that they would have going forward. What happened? We have half the amount of characters that we usually have, but no rivals. Like, they're there, but they're not. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Dragging out Leela finding out that they got into the prelims felt unnecessary. Like, we knew they were going to get in. It's Love Live, of course they were. But the fact that they gave us the tiniest little sliver of Sunny Pa means that I have no right to complain, unfortunately. So I'm going to just leave that in its little box. Now, this is totally not related to the story at all, but is it normal for schools to have auditoriums that big? I, it could just be because I went to school in the country and the schools I went to were not fantastic in terms of resources. Like, <laughs> one of my schools was half connected to the public library and the public pool, so we had to share, like, all of our spaces, which was fine, but we still didn't have an auditorium like that. That's huge. We had, like, a... I'm sort of not inclined to even call it a stage. It was just a room with seats. <laughs> anyway, that's just me getting... I don't know, country versus city culture shock or something. Anyway, I think the visiting Kanon and Chisato school premise is a really, really cute episode idea, but it's come in too late. They should have brought this in when we were still dealing with Kanon having stage fright issues. And I spoke about this last time, but the whole stage fright subplot got quote unquote solved very quickly and now all of a sudden it's unsolved. It seems like she only has issues performing when the narrative needs her to have issues performing, and that's not good writing. In fact, that's really lazy writing, and it shows that either they just couldn't be bothered dealing with the ramifications of having a character with stage fright, or they desperately needed some filler and thought, oh, remember that plot point that we solved in like episode two? We're bringing it back, boys. I don't know, it just feels weird, and I do have a way that they could have fixed it. There's nothing wrong with the episode. It's just where it fits in relation to everything else. Either it should have happened earlier, or the rest of the story needs to be altered so that Kanon still has issues with stage fright. Or at least we are aware that she still has issues, because Kuku even said, I'm the reason Kano could sing on stage in the first place. Like, good job. But there was obviously something else here that they just didn't talk about, and that was the fact that Kano could only sing with other people. That was never addressed before now. So why is it only just coming up? The idea that if they had more people in the group, she would be more comfortable performing is something that I feel like we should have known before this. Or at least maybe should have been addressed, like... We've, we've seen her on stage so many times, and not once has this been brought up. Come on, guys. So, the way that I personally would fix that issue is I would have Kanon not be the center until the final Love Life performance. That makes the most sense, and it is the least amount of work, I think. Because if we look at it this way, Kuku was the center in their first song, Chisato was the center in their second, Ren in their third, Sumire in their fourth. If they didn't push the narrative that Kanon is our center, she's our leader, 
then I probably wouldn't have an issue with this, but they would have had to fill that in with Kanon pushing her own agenda of, oh, I can't be the center, I'm just happy to perform with you guys. Like, I think that just the fact that she could sing on a stage would be enough to sort of sate her need to perform, her need to sing, and would fulfill her narrative needs. But obviously the other characters would be there to say, hey, so the theme for the, the Love Live in Tokyo is solos, and Kanon, you're our best solo singer, so we really need you to be the center on this one, babe. That would be cool. I think that would have been awesome, but... There's been such a push for Kanon to be the center of attention, the center of the stage, and it just, this episode doesn't fit. I don't think it fits. I mean, look, maybe it is just pure filler and the writers just grabbed whatever plot point they could bring up and resolve in a single story, single story, single episode, but I don't know, I don't know. It feels disjointed compared to everything else that Kanon's gone through and everything that we've been shown. <sighs> Anyway, the way that the other girls threw Kanon under the bus, I did not like that. The the whole Chisato spiel of being like, I want to bring the old Kanon back. Like, that is so painfully anime. If you did that in real life, if you organized with your friends and you told your stage fright ridden mate, hey, sorry, we can't perform with you. You're going to have to do this one solo. And then you turned up at the performance I would be livid! That That's not okay! And look, I get this is anime, it's like, oh, you know, they're friends in the end, they all love each other, Kanon got it, she understood why they did it, but we'll never see ramifications for this. We will never see any consequences because Kanon will just accept and move on. And that will happen off screen. We won't see her having that discussion with them saying, hey guys, look, I get why you did what you did, but could you not? Could you maybe not do that to me in the future? Thanks. Because, like, <sighs> it's such a dick move. And I, <sighs> it was one thing for them all to plot behind her back. It was another to show up anyway. I think that was the real kicker for me. And that's what really turned this episode from mindless filler into, okay, this actually kind of is bad. I don't want to say it sucks, but it was not the greatest in terms of writing and the way that it actually fits into the rest of the narrative. <sighs> At the very least, obviously Kanon's insert song, very good, her voice is gorgeous, and she killed it. But I've got to bring back this point from last time, we, there's so many insert songs, we're absolutely spoiled for insert songs, and that's fine, we can have a lot of them, but again, it feels like they just don't know how to end these episodes. And I get it, you want your episodes to end on some kind of impactful note or with some kind of fanfare or on a cliffhanger. You want something that's going to keep people watching, bring them back to the next episode. And it's difficult, I think, particularly with slice of life kind of stuff. And if this story followed a kind of carry-on narrative where each episode flowed directly into the next. You could do that kind of cliffhanger thing that we saw with the Ren arc where, oh man, we just found a bunch of stuff about Ren's mum, we go check it out next time, haha, -ha, now you gotta watch, suckers. It's difficult to end stories when you are wrapping up each plot point within that time span because either you're going to create a scenario where everything's tied up a little too nicely and it feels like there's nothing else to do or you're going to leave way too many loose ends. 20 minutes is not a lot of time, particularly when you're storytelling and that's why a lot of these videos go for a fairly long time. There's a lot of thoughts in my head and I don't spare any expenses. I stop talking when I run out of things to say. Sometimes I might think, oh, I should have spoken about that. Like, I haven't said anything about Manmaru. I think, I think the owl is adorable for what it's worth, but it's very easy to write too much or too little. And I think this kind of episode is the case where they could have gone either way. 
they could have drawn out the Kanon thing, like the stage fright plot, so much longer. We could have had an entire half season without any songs because of Kanon, and that actually would have been kind of interesting. But it also would have gotten very boring very fast, because I can guarantee most Love Life fans are here for the songs. They're here for the actual idol content, not the narrative. <laughs> and that's something I personally forget. It's more that I guess I'm here for the characters more than I'm here for the songs. Like if I want the songs, I'll go to Spotify. When I want character content, I go to the anime, I go to the movies. If I want content of the voice actors, then I'll go and watch the live streams or check out the VODs on YouTube. You know, th there's a lot of content here and it does feel like the anime is kind of following a cookie cutter plot line in a weird sort of way, right? Because obviously this is different to what's happened in the past with the love life stories, but in a lot of ways it's kind of similar. I mean, we can draw parallels, right? There's always some cheery girl that wants to start an idol club, her bestie that's really supportive and is like, yeah, I'll help you out with this, but it's not my favorite thing in the world. And the stern student council president that's like, oh, no school idols, uh-uh, not for you. One thing I have noticed, and I mentioned before that, Leela has not been so obvious about telling us this character's the choreographer, this character writes the songs, this one does the costumes. They kind of left that for the story to tell us, and that is fantastic. They showed us. Cuckoo does the costumes. They kind of told us about uh, Kanon doing the lyrics and Chisato doing the dancing, but we also got to see them doing those things. We get to see Chisato dancing and Kanon singing, and that's fantastic. Obviously, Ren and Sumire kind of fall off that platform. There's not a ton of stuff that we can actually be shown with them. But who knows, maybe in the future we'll actually get to see Ren figure skating. That would be cool. Or maybe some Sumire acting. Who knows? That, that'd be fun. I've gone way off track. I think this is my biggest tangent yet. To wrap up my thoughts about this episode, it was kind of unnecessary in my eyes. I think they just needed something, some kind of final conflict before the love live. They needed to introduce and wrap it up in 20 minutes so they weren't overcomplicating things. They thought, let's just grab this plot point from the beginning, bring it back, fix it, and then we don't have to deal with it again. I don't know. I think I would have liked some more juice there. Also, has it taken 11 episodes for us to learn that Kanon's sister's name is Arya? I feel like we maybe should have known that earlier, but this is at least the first time I've heard the name. <laughs> it's very possible I haven't been paying attention, but who knows? Maybe. If I'm wrong, please let me know. As for my predictions for the next episode, it's pretty straightforward, huh? I mean, we're gonna get their love life performance. Kanon's gonna kill it as center. And I really hope we get a Sunny Pop performance and we don't just get a shot of them after their set saying like, Hey, good luck, Leela. You're gonna do great. No, give me that Sunny Pop content. Stop being coward, Sunrise.